Mm-mm-mm. All right. So today's topic is, and let me go back to my presentation. All right. So today's topic is the five love languages. So yesterday was Valentine's Day and, um, you know, people have certain expectations when it comes to Valentine's Day, when it comes to anniversaries and birthdays. Um, and we have expectations when it comes to how people interact with us. And so we want to learn how can we better interact with one another? How can we better show one another that we love each other, um, that we care? And, um, and how can we further understand who we are and how we interact with people? You know, so in addition to how we receive it, but how do we give it out? So um, the five love languages is, is based off of a book by Gary Chapman called the five love languages there are different series there's one for young people there's one for women there's one for men um so if you're interested please check them out um, you can find them on amazon but the love languages are um how we receive love from others how we communicate and how we show love to others and the reason love languages are so important because it helps us to create a strong relationship with each other it helps us to understand who we are and it um it kind of not kind of but it eliminates or helps a, a lesson commun miscommunication being misunderstood um a disconnection and even resentment. So um, the five love languages I asked this morning, did anybody know what their love languages are? So I want to ask that tonight. Um, I know we went through the five love languages and we learned a lot. So did anybody um, learn like what their love languages are? Their primary and maybe secondary love language that they didn't know from this morning? I know Sister Tina says she didn't know. Sister Tina, did you um, get some insight as to what your love language is? Yes, um, service and um, um, I like uh, what you say, contact. What's, what was that, was, was that one of touch? I like to hug yes. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure about those two. Okay, physical touch and acts of service. Okay. Yes. All right, did anybody else learn what their love language uh, is that would like to share? Okay, Sister Kenyell says that she now thinks that it might be gifts. Okay, all right, so yeah, um, Sister Kenyatta, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I was having technical difficulties. Um, my uh, love languages is words of affirmation and um, acts of service. Okay, words of affirmation, acts of service, okay. Anybody yes. else wanna share what their love language is? Anybody else? Okay, um, let's see, got some in the chat. Kanisha says acts of service and gifts. And Sister Ariel says affirmation, okay. All right, and there's some that may not be sure exactly what their love language is. So <clears throat> just to give um, an oversight, well, overview, there are five love languages and we can all operate out of all five. We can do all five. Um, and we're, we can do all five. So, but there are some, sorry, there are some that are more prominent than others. So we all know how to say supportive things to one another. We all know how to spend quality time. Um, we all know how to give gifts or do things of service or, you know, physical touch. But there are some that like really stand out 
as meaning more than others. So I gave the example of um, a friend of mine who his love language is gifts, receiving and giving gifts. Mine is words of affirmation. So for my birthday, he gave me a gift and I told him like, hey, you can just give me words of affirmation, you know, but he gave me a gift and I was grateful for it because I understood that is his love language. And so it meant a lot to him to give me that gift. So I received it in love, but not, but I received it in love. So in that moment, um, if I did not understand his love language, I would have maybe gotten upset like hey you're not listening to me this is what I wanted and you didn't give me what I wanted but because we both learned what each other's love language is you know it makes it easier so for his birthday I'll give a card and so he's not expecting a gift but there are times where I'll do it for him where I will send a gift and there are times where he'll do it for me where he will give me a card. So it helps, once again, like I said, it helps um, alleviate different issues that may arise in relationships and friendships and our relationships with saints. You know, miscommunication, alleviates miscommunication, being misunderstood, disconnection, and eventually resentment when we understand what each other's love language is. Amen, amen. All right, so looking here to see um, some more spiritual gifts. They're looking good, all right. So I see quality time. Um, someone says they believe as they heal, one day they will like physical touch. Okay, and you know, I really think so. Um, I agree with that person that said that. Um, and then someone says quality time, all right. Great. So, um, so we're going to quickly go over what the five love languages are, and then we're going to talk about the differences between men and women and different other cultural um, variations when it comes to love languages. So the first love language is words of affirmation. And words of affirmation is basically saying supportive uh, loving things to one another. So you like to give compliments. You like to encourage people. You like to um, you like to encourage people. And so, in those moments, if you have, if your love language are words of affirmation, you could call someone. You can call a saint. You can call a friend and say, "Hey, you know, you are really doing a great job in what you do," or you really look nice today. So there are things that you say things to encourage people, to empower people. You use your words. Second love language is quality time. Uh, quality time, that is spending meaning, meaningful time with other people. And you have to be careful. It has to be meaningful. You know, you don't want to be sitting there and, you know, both of you all are zoned out on TV or you're sitting in the same room and one person's on their phone and another person is uh, maybe reading a book. It is meaningful time with one another, talking or doing an activity together. You're doing things together. Um, I, I remember uh, an example, I have an example. I remember there was a time where my mom was talking to my dad about something and he was engrossed in the sports program. I don't know, it was baseball. One of, you know, whatever sports that men watch. And she's just talking and talking and talking. And I'm watching him, I'm like, he is not paying attention to a word she's saying. And, you know, occasionally he's like, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, I heard that. Really? And it's like, dad, you're not paying attention to her. And, you know, and she wasn't paying attention to the fact that he wasn't paying attention. And so, you know, when she left the conversation, I guess maybe she felt as though they spent quality time together. And I'm like, you didn't because he wasn't paying attention to what you said. So you want to make sure that when you are spending quality time with someone, that it's meaningful time, it's uninterrupted 
time where you all spend time to talk or to do an activity. You don't have to talk. You can do an activity. You both can go swimming or you can both go hiking. Just something together. Um, let's see. The third love language is receiving gifts. So in receiving gifts, you enjoy giving gifts to people. It gives you joy. And you, re and you may receive, uh, enjoy receiving gifts. You know, it makes you feel happy. And these gifts are things that are um, close to your heart. You like to make note of different events that you all have done together or things, places that you've gone. Gifts really mean, mean a lot. And when you're given a gift, these gifts should be things that um, that are, I'm trying to think of the best word to use. Let me go here. They should be meaningful gifts. That's, they should commemorate what you're doing. They should um, represent something uh, that is relevant to that event. So I say that to say, let's say you've gone on a vacation and um, you're in the airport. You can grab a, a gift for your friends, your partners, whoever, you know, saying, hey, I was at this place and I thought of you. That means a lot. It's the gesture. It's not just, you know, a random gift, like, you know, but it is a gesture. However, like uh, Dr. Sylvester said this morning, that people, we have to also be cognizant that um, the gifts that we give, the things that we do, our love languages, that we appreciate the thought. It's the thought that counts. So even if somebody just gets you a random gift, be appreciative of that gift. Um, I used the example of a TV show this morning where um, the character forgot to buy his friends a gift for Christmas. So he ran to the gas station and just bought all these little random gifts and gave them out to his friends, you know, like, um, you know, a candy bar, windshield wipers, you know, one of those brushes that you brush off the snow off your car. And, you know, the characters, you know, the characters on the show did not appreciate the gifts. However, it is the thought that counts because he could have just said, hey, you know, I didn't get him nothing. So just move on. But it is the thought that counts. So we have to be cognizant of that. I do want to put that disclaimer in there. And also, I just also want to say, if you have any questions, any comments, this is your opportunity. You can raise your hand and we will call on you. You could, you know, give us some feedback, you know, if you want to. Um, talk about the topics that we're talking about, or if you have a question, you can put it in the chat. You can make it private if you don't want it to be seen by everyone, or you could um, put it for everyone to see, or you can raise your hand. So I want to let everyone know this will be interactive. So join in on the conversation, please. All right. So the fourth gift is um, acts of service. So I saw a lot of people have said that their love language are acts of service. So it's acts of service. Acts of service, they believe that actions speak louder than words. And in these cases, they, um, they are able to do things for others to help alleviate stress. Or if your acts of service is receiving acts of service, you enjoy when people are able to do things for you or do things on behalf of you that would alleviate stress. So we gave the example this morning of a married couple, the husband who does the dishes, the husband who may do the laundry, um, put the, the kids to bed. Those little things mean a lot to the wife because he is paying attention to what she needs and he's trying to help her. Um, in friendships, you know, if you come to my house and you grab my mail from the mailbox before you come in, 
<laughs> so someone said those are women jobs. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So I like to hear from the brothers. Like, what are some things that you know the brothers would when it comes to acts of service? What are some things for the acts of service? So for friends, you know, grabbing my mail before you come in the house or you know, before you leave out, like, hey, let me grab that trash and I'll put it outside for you before you leave. You know, it's the little things that, that helps alleviate that people whose love language are acts of service really appreciate. So someone gave some more affirmation and acts of service. Okay, okay, sounds good. Um, and the last love language is a uh, physical touch. So with physical touch, individuals really love uh, touching, you know, caressing, holding hands, kissing, um, cuddling, sex. And these are, um, these actions serves as an emotional connector. It helps them feel connected to their partner. And if you're friends or if this is a saint of God, um, holding hands, hugging, you know, rubbing their backs. Those, serves, those serve as emotional connectors. I gave an example um, to my sister this morning when I was away at school, I noticed that people were very physical with one another. They would walk up and, you know, give each other back rubs and, you know, hug and hold hands. And, it, you know, Sometimes women and women, men and men, they were just very touchy filly. And I'm not a touchy filly type of person. So it definitely was an eye opener for me to see that happening, you know, um, but it can be done, you know, with saints, with friends. So don't think the physical touch is just something that you only do with your partner. People whose love language is physical touch do this with their friends, they do this with their family, they do it with, um, they do it with everyone. Um, so those are the five love languages. Are there any questions? So far, any comments? Amen, are there any? Um, all right, uh, Brother Charles. Um. I was just gonna say, uh, when a few years ago, my father, he, um, him and my mother went to the conference that uh, Dr. Chapman did. And um, what he realized was when he really got to have a conversation and we started studying it as a church, him knowing not just my mother's love language, but him knowing my own love language mm -hmm. and me knowing his love language, it helped us to understand each other better. Okay. And so um, he's, uh, he didn't, for a long time, he didn't like to text at all, mm -hmm. but, but words of affirmation is something that's big for me. And so he purposely, when he found out that was something that I enjoyed doing, that that was my love, my major love language, he would purposely text me for a while just to say, I care about you, I love you. And it made me say, okay, I might not feel like spending time with him today but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make time. Um, and so it made me say, okay, or like my mother, hers is acts of service. So I don't like doing the dishes. And he also is the type that didn't like doing the dishes, but uh, we made sure that we would do different things um, because we knew that was, that acts of service is something that she enjoys doing. Um, even growing up, my cousins would say that uh, she was the aunt when 
everyone else would give toys, she was the one who would give more things that you need. And so it just kind of, it with whenever I'm dating someone, I try to make sure that I know when we start getting serious, the first thing I do is, so what's your love language? And when mm -hmm. they, I make them take the test. Okay. Okay. And that works for you all. Good. Okay. And that's a really great example of how using your love language um, helps in relationships. Uh, wow, that's a really good example. Thank you so much, Brother Charles, for that. Um, mm. Okay, so I see a comment in the chat says, I struggle with physical touch, grew up without it. Is listening both ways a love language? So listening both ways is not a love language. Um, you know, listening is not a love language. Listening is something that we should be doing regardless um, to who it is. Um, it's a part of relationships. Um, so maybe as we go through the love languages for men and how it varies for men, that'll give you um, a deeper understanding of what maybe your love language could be. Uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I did pick that up, uh, Sister Sylvester. I think he, he was meaning he suggests they take the test. Like, hey, why don't you take this test? Um, and so I concur. Um, my, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not a physical touch type of person when it comes to people outside of relationships. And my mom is, she has evolved into someone who's really into physical touch. And so when she first got into it, it was very awkward. You know, she would come and give me a hug and a kiss and I'd be like, oh, get off of me. Like, it will make me cringe, you know, but when I realized that that was her love language, I challenged myself like, hey, this is her love language. Get over yourself, you know, and give her that, you know, to show her that I, I love her in her love language. So like Brother Charles was saying, you know, his father challenged himself, you know, we can all challenge each other, challenge ourselves to meet that other person's love language. Um, now there was another question. It says they were wondering how their love language affects their experience with God. It says, do I look for God to respond according to my love language too? For example, if gifts is my language, do I only feel that God loves me when he provides tangible material things for me? Does, and so, yes, that definitely makes sense. Um, and I think that, and I would welcome, you know, additional uh, insight into this. I definitely think that many of us look to God to, um, to show us he loves us in our love language. So if your love language is receiving gifts, when God blesses you with something, you're like, oh, God really loves me. Or, you know, when you're in prayer time, you know, you're like, man, I really feel close to God. Now, physical touch, I'm not sure exactly what that would be. Maybe that would be, you know, when you're in the spirit and you're praising God, that could be physical touch. Um, but I do think that we do kind of expect God to show us he loves us in our love language. And um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So like I said, I would love to get some insight into <coughs> what others think, if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. Uh, Sister Sylvester, could you give us a little insight on what you think in regards to God showing us he loves us in our love language? Um, God showed you that he loved you when he died for your sins. That's, That's true. the greatest gift of all. But if we're talking about love language, I was having a discussion with another um, member 
earlier today, and we were talking about, we were comparing the love language to the fruits of the spirit. If you kind of look at the fruits of the spirit and you look at those five different love languages, they kind of correlate. Okay. The bottom line is, as a Christian, we're supposed to exhibit love to people even when they're not quote unquote lovable, right? Correct. And so part of the love language is learning how to recognize not just our own love language, but another person's love language. Um, okay. And when you exhibit the fruit of the spirit, you do that. Um, I'm not looking for anything in return. Uh, I, um, uh, my, if my love language is service, um, I'm doing something for you. Well, that's, that's a gift of the spirit, right? We, uh, we are uh, active in the church. We're uh, helping to, to build the church. We're helping, we're reaching out to others in the community. So we're doing service. So uh, we know that uh, God provides for us. He protects us. That's his way of showing us that he loves us. And so we don't have to uh, looking for a monetary gifts from God. Um, no, you're not looking for monetary gifts from God. You're looking just for God's uh, covering, uh, his blessing, his keeping you, his providing for you. Um, he's going to give you, God has promised to give us what we need. And we get some of our wants if they're in line with his will. Because some of the stuff we want is not necessarily good for us. And so he shows us that he loves us even when we don't get our way. And guess what? Your friends, your parents, uh, your significant other, your husband, your wife, guess what? They show you they love you when they don't always give you everything you want. So we kind of look at it in that vein. Hmm. Okay. So with the question being, um, do we receive God's love better in our own love language? What do you think? Well, when it comes to dealing with God, I don't, I don't think that uh, uh, our love language would have anything to do with that. We freely receive God because it is an act of will. And so we, uh, can you freely trust and uh, uh, trust another individual? So I guess when you, when you receive God, you're receiving him because you trust and you believe that he is who he says he is and that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. So that does, that transcends all of our so-called love languages. Because who's the father of love? Who is love incarnate? Mm, okay. God. So that uh, the love language is transcended, transcended by God's love because God is love incarnate. So he's going to reach you at whatever level you at. You, he doesn't have to come to you in your love language. He just has to come to you in who he, as who he is and what he is. True. God. True. I agree. And so I think the question is, do, you know, and we know that that is how it's supposed to be, but there are some people who may not be at that level where they fully understand that. So when they're looking, you know, they're growing in their relationship with God. So when they're looking at um, things that are happening in their lives, you know, good things or bad things and different things, do they interpret those things through their love language? And so, so let me ask this question. Let me, I know it's not apropos to answer a question with a question. However, I'm going to go there. When you got saved, did you know anything about a love language? So if you look at the scripture, the scripture tells you who you are in God. He speaks directly to each of us. He tells us who we are. 
how much he loves us. Mm -hmm. He gives us, then he give, He lets us know his love language, what we need to do uh, to please him, uh, to be on one accord with him. And so you are uh, dearly beloved of God. You are completely accepted. You are totally forgiven. You're uniquely chosen as a child of God. Now, with that being said, you go through the, if you go through Psalms and Hebrews and Timothy and Romans and Acts, that's God's love letter to you. He's telling you who you are and he's telling you, he's letting you know who you are and what your love language with him should be. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for that insight. Amen. Are there any other questions before we move on to the next? But I, I, I want to say something else, Carmen. Mm -hmm. Can I say this? Sure. So you don't need to do anything to earn blessings and promises from God. Um, when God saved you, you received all that you need needed from him. When you got filled with the Holy Ghost, you got the power to live a life that God has purposely ordained for you. He's given you divine power. He's given you everything that you need to live a godly life. He's even tells you in the Bible how to treat other people. The scriptures tell you how you should be treated. So all of that is within the word. And so God never promised us that our life was going to be perfect, that our life was going to not be troublesome, or that we weren't going to have any um, hiccups or problems. He never promised us that. But what he did promise us, that no matter what happens to you, no matter how beaten, battered, or broken you become, that he is there, he is in it with you, and if you allow it, instead of uh, uh, wallowing in it, because that's a trick of the enemy, if you allow him, he will bring you through it better than you were before you went through it. Okay. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Sister Sylvester. I appreciate that insight. Okay, um, so I promised that we would talk about the five love languages based off of how men interpret love languages. So let's get into that. So when we talk about words of affirmation, you know, we're saying that these are, you know, we people enjoy compliments and people enjoy being told how much uh, they're loved or they like telling people that they love them. <laughs> um, so with words of affirmation, men are looking for admiration. They want to be respected for who they are and what they've accomplished. So if you are a man who enjoys to be respected for who you are and what you have accomplished, maybe words of affirmation is your love language. That's how you show love and that's how you, you receive love. <laughs> With quality time, men prefer shoulder to shoulder time. So there's a difference between, um, so shoulder to shoulder time, when they say shoulder to shoulder time, that means like you're there, um, it doesn't have to be anything grandiose or elaborate. It's just, you know, time with them um, where they do act, where you all do activities together instead of sharing feelings. We know that men are not always, um, a fan of sharing their feelings. So they like to do activities together. There was, um, I had a friend who would, we would just drive around, you know, and just do random day-to-day -day stuff. And that was, you know, him, his way of saying, hey, I care about you because, you know, you're spending time with me and, you know, didn't talk about nothing, didn't really share any feelings. You know, it wasn't nothing deep. It was just that time. 
So it was really general when it comes to time. So with quality time, men prefer doing activities together instead of sharing feelings. With gifts, men are not impressed by gifts. They're looking to, they're looking for um, that longed for prize. So if you have a man in your life who um, really enjoys um, fishing and he's talked about um, this certain fishing pole, you know, like this is like the grandiose, the, the best fishing pole in the entire land you know, and you go out and get him this fishing pole, that really means a lot to him. So my father's uh, love language was gifts. And he loved, uh, he loved music. So um, I bought him this, cause, not cause, it was cassettes back then. No, it was CDs, it was CDs, but it was a set of uh, blue CDs. And he just was just like over the moon, ecstatic about these CDs, you know, of blues from like the 30s and 40s or whatever. I don't know. I'm not into blues, but he really enjoyed them. So whereas I would get him something like, you know, a tie for Christmas, like, oh, thank you. He's appreciative of the tie. But when he got the CD set, it, it really meant a lot to him because that was his, his love language. And men really look for longed for prizes. They want that, that prize, you know, that prize pretty much. Uh, with service, um, men, what they're looking for is dominion. When the house is in order, when the house is happy, when the family is good, they feel loved. So if you have a man in your life and his, uh, love language is service just know that you know when everything is good with his house and his family he feels that love he feels that love and uh, lastly with touch men are most vulnerable in the bedroom so they can either feel like a superhero or they can feel emasculated so you want to make sure for couples, for, for married people, that you know you focus on that. And then also men, touch can be visual. So dressing up, you know, changing, <laughs> so changing how you look, you know, is also a part of the touch love language when it comes to men. So when you see them changing their looks, you know, that is them operating in their love language changing their looks for their, their significant other. That is their love language. So that is a variation to the love language when it comes to men. So men, I wanna ask you, what do you all think your love language is? So we heard from brother Charles about what his love language is, which is words of affirmation. And I see we have a couple of brothers on. So I wanna hear, what are you, what are you guys love language? So uh, this is Marvin. Um, hey, everyone. Happy, happy to be here with you. Uh, Thank you. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Uh, but so mine, my, my top two are uh, words of affirmation, words of affirmation and physical touch. Uh, okay. Those, those rank for me. Okay. Okay. And how did you come to know that? Uh, years and years ago, a, a friend of mine was telling me about it, and and this is before it got popular. And I was like, "Ah, oh, that stuff ain't real." And <laughs> they were like, "Oh, you should take the test." And so I, you know, I took the test, and and that's what it told me. And then I just began to kind of look back through life, um, and the the things that uh, you know mean a lot to you that you enjoy doing, right? Um, I think most men like to hear good things about them and to speak well and highly of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then physical touch is, is just that, right? So um, I think that one's self-explanatory. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for sharing, Marvin. Are there any other brothers that would like to share what, they, um, what their love language 
are, or if they want to get some insight into the variation of love languages when it comes to men. So we talked about instead of words of affirmation, they're looking for admiration. And with quality time, it's like really just doing activities and spending time together. Um, with gifts, they're looking for that longed for prize. Um, Sister Ariel says that her husband is a hugger. Okay. He's, his is physical touch. Amen. Um, with service, men are looking um, for they are focused on their dominion. When their house and their family is happy and, and in order, they feel love. And with touch, you know, that's kind of self-explanatory when it comes to men. Uh, Minister Iverson. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Uh, when it comes to um, acts of service, um, uh, I would say from a man's perspective, um, if his uh, primary love language is uh, his acts of service, he uh, exhibits uh, love. Similar to you say, you know, everything is, uh, uh, everybody is good, but he also re receives love by things done, when something is done for him that, you know, he didn't necessarily have to ask for, um, uh, um, that didn't have to be done, like washing his clothes or um, uh, just cooking, cooking him, you know, his favorite meal. Uh, Surprise him with breakfast in bed, different things like that. So he receives it, but stuff that's not necessarily you didn't, you didn't, you didn't have to do it, do it uh, uh, for them or for him. Um, but you um, went out of your way to do something that uh, as an act of service uh, to him, um, then that's how he, he receives it. That's how he get, gives it, that's how he receives it. Okay. Amen. Amen. So it kind of falls in line with the original, the traditional love yeah. language. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Thank you so much. Um, I see Brother Wayne says that... Um, Men do like sharing emotions, but are you a good listener? Ooh, so Brother Wayne, come on and, you know, elaborate on that for us. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm s sort of a, uh, what would you call a person that does most things for, for itself? Uh, yes. Self-sufficient? Mm -hmm. You said self-sufficient? No, I, I grew up, my grandmother taught me everything that she, she taught my sister. So, okay. so there's not too many things that one can, can do that I can't do also. So, so me doing all those things, I think that I'm helping as far as keeping the household to together, whereas some people think that's something that you're supposed to do. But there are a lot of men who like being served and like things being done for them. But mm -hmm. I'm one, I'm a, a little different than, than most, but you know, I kept on bringing up the listening part. Mm -hmm. uh, my uh, love, what you call it, love language? Love language, yes, sir. I believe mine's is is act of service, but uh, there is one part of the quality time that a lot of women don't put much into, and that part is just listening. You know, uh, sometimes. You know, because men kind of gotten used to it. They, they, you know, you were talking about your father early. He was saying, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, you know. Uh, so he, he knows how, how to respond to it. And he knows how not to respond to certain, certain things. Mm -hmm. Whereas sometimes 
all a man needs for a woman to do is just listen. She doesn't have to take over the conversation, uh, necessarily have an, an answer, but to just to listen, even if it sounds silly or stupid, mm -hmm. just just listening. Listening is is a is art. It is. You know, it is an art, and it's something that and most people uh, don't put a lot of effort into doing it because they're too busy talking at the same time that they're supposed to be listening that your part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I find, I find that, that most relationships, uh, marriages, that that is a, a, a bad part where a lot of marriages fall apart, a relationship, because uh, one doesn't listen, whichever one it is, a man or the woman, one doesn't give the listening the time to listen what the other person is saying. Uh, uh, one doesn't just sit there and just let that person say what they need to say. And am I making any sense to anyone? No, you're making oh, perfect sense. You, yes, sir. You know, yeah. And that's where communication fails a lot of times in relationships because one is, is allowed to say whatever it is that they need to say and the other one is not because if that person start then a debate starts you know mm -hmm. well it, that person is right or wrong but sometimes things will go over easier you know not saying that you, you're not supposed to just take anything you know i mean if it's something serious yeah you know you, you make you make a, a comment but sometimes mm -hmm. it's good to just just say, like your dad do. That's a smart man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> 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 That's a smart man. That's a smart husband. <laughs> That's all I had to say. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. Amen. So women, we need to listen more. Um I, I will agree, you know, sometimes we do like to, you know, and that comes with learning communication skills, you know, listening to respond versus listening to fully understand and empathize. Someone said women just be talking. Mm. Well, and sometimes if you just get to the point of just learning to listen, mm -hmm. then that man will eventually open up and started mm -hmm. talking about uh, deeper things about itself. Right. But, but if, if he can't get it out, <laughs> you know, he, he's, he, he's going to hold, hold it in because it, he feels that it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. So, no, that makes perfect sense. Okay. Amen. So, ladies, I hope that we're paying attention, you know, very good point. Amen. Um, anybody else want to, um, sister, someone had their hand up. Was that Kenesha? Oh, Kenya. No. Oh, that was, it was an accident. Oh, okay. <laughs> anybody else want to share or elaborate on that? Carmen. Yes, ma'am. Brother Wayne, I absolutely agree with you. But I think that in most relationships, we are not listening to one another. And men are not going to open up to women if they don't feel that we're actually paying attention to them or that we're going to have something negative to say or are we going to make a negative comment when they try to express their feelings? Because Hallelujah. we tend to make them feel as though their feelings are not valid. But that there's a flip side to that because that goes both ways. Sometimes women can be in relationships. We're trying to talk to you brothers and y'all not listening. Or you um, play it down as though it isn't important. So I think that this is basically 
uh, working on communication and understanding how to communicate with another another person. And I think somebody uh, put in the chat about listening uh, to res uh, you listening to respond versus listening to be empathetic or sympathetic towards the person. So there's a difference for me waiting. I can't wait for you to finish so I can jump on top of what you said. Right. You know, that's listening to Amen. respond versus listening to understand where you're coming from. Because sometimes the brother may be telling you, giving you some insight about your, your personality. Instead of you becoming defensive, you might need to say, you know something, honey, you're right. I'm going to take a look at that. Or vice versa. Uh, the sister may be telling the brother some stuff that he might want to uh, look at. And instead of getting defensive, sometimes we need to say, you know what, I'm going to take a look at that. But that's only, we can only do that if we're listening to hear and not listening to respond. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Totally agree. Amen. Praise the Lord, Carmen. Can I read this one verse? Sure. Go ahead. Proverbs 18, chapter 18, <laughs> verse 13. He that answers a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Like, like uh, our sister, uh, help me out, I'm having to, having to sing you more. And Sylvester always was, was saying, if you're sympathetic toward it, rather than just waiting to, to throw something negative back, rather than allowing that person to say whatever it is that they need to say, maybe if you just let that person, I'm, this is both ways though. I'm mm -hmm. talking about male and female. If you just allow that person to say whatever it is that they need to say, will it be truthful or silly or what, then it won't be any back and forth or a waiting, to, you know, hastily to jump in to, to cut someone off. Yeah, I agree. Amen. Amen. And I listen to my male friends, you know, for things that they say, things that they don't say, because it gives me insight into who they are and what motivates them and, you know, what pushes them a certain way. So, yeah, listening is it's a skill. Active listening is definitely a skill. Um, and I thank you, um, Brother Wayne, for that insight. So we have a hand raised. Uh, Minister Iverson. Uh, yes, that was very insightful, Brother Wayne. Um, uh, I did want to, you know, um, and I didn't really think about it, so I guess, you know, think about uh, uh, love languages. But if we uh, uh, notice, and I think I was talking to Evangelist Sylvester Stahl about this, a lot of the love languages, if we look at scripture, they are related to a lot of, they are related to a lot of the gifts of the spirit. For example, right. somebody that has a word whose who's, uh, love language is word of affirmation, a lot of times they have the gift of exhortation, teaching, preaching. Somebody who is a uh, physical touch probably has the gift of healing and hospitality. Uh, someone who is uh, acts of service, they will have like the gift of helps and uh, administration and governance. Uh, you know, so forth and so on. So a lot of these things, I was like, hmm, that's pretty interesting that a lot of the love languages actually correlate to some of the gifts of the spirit that is given to us by uh, when we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So Amen. talking about listening, that's exactly what uh, Sister Sylvester said. No, because we were talking earlier. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying you just reiterated what she said. So, um, let's see. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, I saw that message. No, it's fine. Um, are there any other, um, anyone else want to share before we close out with prayer? If not, 
I'm going to ask if... Praise, praise the Lord. One more time, Sister Carmen. I praise the Lord. Uh, I like the acts of service because you don't always have to have the, the right words. I know the right words to say. You just mm -hmm. do from your heart. And that's that's me mostly. I like mm -hmm. act of service. Even though sometimes it does <laughs> entails me running my mouth, you know, that's an act of service also. But I just like doing things for, for, for people, helping people. Amen. Amen. And that's a beautiful um, love language to have. You know, all of these love languages are very helpful in the, in the kingdom of God. Um, it's helpful in relationships. It's helpful in friendships. So, you know, if you have identified your love language, operate in it, you know, um, work, work with others in it so that we can be unified, so we could build each other up, so that we can help support one another. Amen. Um, if there are no more questions, going through, going through. Um, Okay, if there are no more questions, I'm going to ask if Minister Bembry could dismiss us in prayer. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Father, we thank you. There we go. Father, we thank you and we love you for all of your many blessings, for everything that you've, you're, you've done in our lives and that you're doing in our lives. God, we we thank you for our destiny that you have in place for us, that you're bringing us to an expected place. And we give you great praise and glory for that. Now, God, we thank you for the discussion that we had tonight, the growth that we have in our minds and our spirits. God, we ask that you would take us forward. God, heal somebody tonight and, and undergird someone, encourage someone. God, strengthen someone with your love and with your power. Uh, even now, God, encourage them to continue to press forward this year in 2021 and that you are going to get the glory this year. You're going to have a testimony coming out of this year that the Lord was with you, the Lord was kind to you, and that the Lord helped you through this year. And so we thank you, God, for that. We give you great praise, glory, and honor. If there be any need, God, we pray that you would meet it in abundance. God, if there be any financial need, we pray you would meet it in abundance. Any need of healing, God, we pray that you would meet it in abundance. God, any need of strength, we pray you would meet it in abundance. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, God. We give you great praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, we will be back tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. for prayer for family, family affair. Um, Wednesday, we'll be giving out food. Um, so if you would like to volunteer, please show up um, on Wednesday. I believe they'll be starting at noon. Um, but be good to get there early and help set up. And on Friday, um, for all AHOP members, there will be a musical tribute um, and at the church. We will go through um, the social distancing guidelines. Um, so please be mindful of those announcements and keep each other in your prayers and have a great, oh, Sister Tina, sorry, just saw your hand. Okay, praise him. I was trying to find a quiet spot because I'm at work. Um, I will be there Wednesday. Um, I have to work tomorrow night, so I should make it there Wednesday about 12. Would that okay. be fine? That's, That's cool. fine. Okay, okay, cool. Well, whenever you get there, help is needed regardless right. of what time. Y'all be blessed. Y'all know I'm at work and I'm sneaking, so be blessed. I'll see y'all in the morning. <laughs> All right. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. See everybody back in the morning and have a great, have a great night. Stay safe and stay warm. Bye-bye. Love you all in Jesus name. Love you in Jesus name.